Hello everyone and welcome to the game engine programming series. I'm going to write a game engine from scratch and I thought it would be a good idea if I'd record everything I do in videos and share them online and by doing so create an online resource for people with the same interest in low-level game engine programming. Hopefully these videos will be useful to you and more importantly they'll be enjoyable to watch. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, let me start by describing the general architecture of the game engine as I plan to implement. Uh, the game engine itself is a static library written in C++ and it will provide all the functionality that's needed to run a game. Of course, a library alone is not enough to create a game with. Uh, for that, we need a level editor, which I'm going to uh, write in C Sharp and WPF. The reason that I'm using C Sharp instead of C++ is that uh, creating a user interface in WPF is much easier and less time consuming than uh, it would be in C++. Uh, but the way I am planning to set up this project is that the engine will be completely independent of the level editor. So if you are going to follow along with me, uh, you can choose whatever framework works for you, for example, uh, Qt or SDL or any other framework that uh, you feel comfortable with if C Sharp and WPF are not your uh, thing. For me, because I'm using two different frameworks, I need a DLL, a dynamic link library, to facilitate the communication between the two. And of course, there is also the game code that we need to write in C++ which is basically scripts that we can attach to our game objects when we are making the game in the level editor. So that's pretty much all the parts of the game engine as the project. And concerning the videos, I think it's a good idea to color code each episode so people can see on what part I will be working in that particular video. So because we are more oriented towards low-level game engine programming, I consider those to be uh, the more important videos for people who are interested in game engine programming. So I'll color code those videos uh, red whenever I'm working on a game engine site. And those are must-watch videos for game engine programmers. And whenever I'm working on the DLL and level editor side, um, those will be the green episodes. And those are recommended if you really want to understand everything about this game engine, including the level editor. But sometimes I also need to do some unrelated stuff that's totally not interesting to uh, game engine programmers. Uh, for example, uh, defining the look and feel of the user interface elements like a button or a particular WPF control. And those are blue episodes which you can feel free to skip. And those will only be interesting to people who are also user interface uh, developers. And uh, I'll record them and put them out there just for the sake of completeness, but they are skippable. So this concludes describing the way I'll set up this project and the videos. Next, I'll set up Visual Studio so I can start programming. So here is a dialog window, which presents us with the option to open existing projects or create a new one. Of course, uh, we don't have any projects yet because the game engine doesn't exist yet. So the first option that we are going to use is the create project but suppose we at some point have game projects then here would be a list of all the projects that we are working on and there is an icon next to it and the name of the project and a screenshot uh, of the, the last view that you had when you were working on that project and the two buttons to open or exit and the same thing is for creating a project. We are presented with a list of templates that we can choose from. So we can have an empty project or 
a first person or a top-down real-time strategy kind of um, template that we can choose from and the same as open project we have an icon and the name of the template and a te template picture that uh, signifies what what is in the template right and of course we can give the new project a name and the location uh, to be created and the buttons to create and exit the application this one what uh, we see here on the, um, underneath these buttons, this is what is now blue. And the create uh, part is will be next to it. And whenever we select create project button, it will be shifted to the left. So we see this part. And when we go back to the open project, it will be shifted to the right so we can see the open project this is our design and i'm going to create these controls now for the open project and the create project the way i want to do it is well we have this uh, control now this represents the class that i am using for uh, project creation and what i want to do is to create a class that uh, has the specific things for my use case for creating a project for example i wanted to have these properties or these fields for name and path and a list of templates basically that's a code reflection of what we see here but there will also be functions that operate on these um, on these fields for example we ha will have a, a function to validate uh, the name and path of the project and there will be a function to obviously create uh, a project so what uh, i want to do is to couple these two classes together somehow Unfortunately, um, uh, WPF provides me with a means to do this, and that's the MVVM design pattern, uh, which stands for model view, view model design pattern. So in this case, this is uh, this uh, display of uh, controls is my view, and the logics behind it, the business end is my view model, which also contains my model, model is basically all the data that you need to do the work and the view model is all the code that handles everything that needs to be done with the data so in order to be able to couple these two together uh, or to bind them i need to implement an interface that is i notify property changed interface and this inter interface just has an event that is fired every time one of my view models properties change the way uh, this works is that i can set uh, this class as the data context for my control and bind each property to these controls and whenever this event fires uh, these fields will get notified that something changed the other way around is uh, also uh, possible that if the user types a new name here, then it will change the field in the view model. So this is basically what I always do, almost always do with a user interface construction in WPF. So what does that mean in code? The project is the central uh, data structure that holds everything together in a game editor and it contains pretty much everything that is in the game. It has scenes. And the idea behind the scene is that in the traditional game, you had these levels and each level is a scene. So you have uh, the first level on a loading screen and on the second level. And the first level is a scene as a loading screen is a scene and the second level is another scene. But nowadays games have this continuous loading screen less kind of um, structure and um, in those uh, the idea of scenes still exists but then you have scene transitions so if you go from one area of your game world to another one you have 
sometimes these elevator loading scenes are uh, a small corridor or a hall that the player uh, waits in for um, a certain amount of time and the scene transitions uh, happen. And that's when the the chunk of the world when where the character uh, left and is not uh, able to see anymore gets unloaded and the new chunk of the world where the character is going to you gets uh, loaded and that's the new scene. So this is a list of those levels or chunks of the world uh, depending on what kind of game uh, we are going to create. And each scene of course uh, contains the objects in the world like the player character, uh, the lights and the cameras and it contains game entities and each entity has components. Uh, for example, uh, a component that all entities must have is a transform component and that's just the position and the orientation and the scale of the entity. Even if the entity doesn't have any geometry to be rendered, it at least has to have a position, right? So it has a list of components as well. Uh, for now, because I just want to um, save a project to a file, I need uh, some type of class that has a list of scenes and a name. So that's basically an empty project. Each project has to have at least one scene and the scene might be empty completely in the case of empty an empty project. So let's create a class for a project and a class for scene and give this project a list of scenes with just one scene in it. Perhaps I can show you first what I have in mind for the uh, world editor. And unsurprisingly, it's pretty much the same as any other game engine interface. As you can see, there is a menu part, there is an icon part, uh, there is a renderer. And here on this side, on the right side, we have the scenes and each scene can contain game objects, lights, cameras, etc. Are our game entities. And whenever we select uh, one of these objects, then here down on the right side, we can uh, see the properties of that selected object. And uh, maybe I'll have here a kind of content browser as well to keep track of our game assets and uh, resources that we'll use uh, in, in our game. Uh, so this is uh, what I'm going to try and uh, make in the next couple of videos. And today I would like to just uh, start with, uh, with the larger building blocks. Obviously the renderer will require like maybe 10 or 20 videos of, the, of its own because, well, we are going to program an entire uh, graphics engine for this game engine. That's not something that I can do today, of course. Uh, so it will take time to construct all of these elements. Uh, so today I'll just set up the interface and start by making the functionality to be able to add scenes and maybe remove them and see where we can, uh, how far we can go today. Here in my design of the user interface for the world editor, we can see that there is a list of game objects game entities that can be objects in the world or cameras or lights or other types of entities and each uh, object ha has a list of components at least one component which is the transform component and the transform component is just the position information of the object in the game world and depending on what type of entity we have here, they can have other types of components as well. So today I would like to start uh, defining these classes and the user interface for listing all these objects and adding and removing them from the scene and see how far we can come today. So let's get started. 